Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I thought today we would take a little look at some interesting bumblebee behavior in my permaculture garden. I have my Russian Bocking 14 comfrey plants in full bloom, and they are a favorite food for all kinds of pollinators, including multiple species of bumblebees. When identifying bumblebees, I use the Pacific Northwest Bumblebee Atlas, a wonderful resource I highly recommend. Identifying bumblebees can be just about as tricky as identifying warblers. There are lots of tiny nuances that distinguish various species. The comfrey flowers are relatively long tubed, and that means the bumblebees have to really cram their faces up inside in order to reach the nectar, and they get a good dusting of pollen when doing so. Here you can see a bumblebee foraging in the typical way on comfrey flowers. This particular bumblebee appears to me to be a yellow-faced bumblebee, a common species in the Pacific Northwest and in my garden. As I mentioned, identifying bumblebees is a difficult task. There are several common species, but again, I highly recommend you use the bee atlas. And even so, it is difficult to identify bumblebees in flight. They are best identified from good still photos. As I was observing the yellow-faced bumblebee, I noticed a different species having some unusual behavior. Instead of entering the flower from the bottom where she would get a drink of nectar while pollinating the flowers, as this bumblebee here is doing, this other species of bumblebee appeared to be visiting the top outside edge of the flower. Now I am familiar with the process of nectar robbing, which is where species such as carpenter bees may chew a little tiny hole up at the top of the flower. Bees that have evolved this behavior are able to access the nectar from flowers that would otherwise be too long and narrow for them to effectively feed from. However, for these flowers that experience nectar robbing, it does mean their visitation by a bee does not result in pollination. It is a moot point for something such as my sterile Russian Bakken comfrey here, but for other things such as our fruit crops like blueberries, it can be an issue. Here you can clearly see the tiny holes that were likely made by carpenter bees earlier in the week. Now carpenter bees are important pollinators and for flowers that they are evolved to access, they do pollinate without chewing these little holes. Part of what I love about my garden is being able to spend time outside observing and learning. And here I was seeing some new behavior from bumblebees that I had not previously born witness to, and I wanted to learn more. So let's look at what was going on here. The yellow-faced bumblebee that are visiting the comfrey are spending long periods of time up inside the flower, but I noticed a different species of bee that was very quickly flitting from flower to flower. I could barely capture it on camera, as you can see here. They were jumping rapidly from flower to flower and only at the upper top part of the flower. In comparison, we can see the yellow-faced bumblebee spending long periods with their face up inside that flower, brushing against all of the reproductive parts parts of the flower and accessing the nectar. Even after more than 20 years in the garden, I am still learning new things. I had not previously observed any bumblebees engaging in behavior that looked very much like carpenter bee nectar robbing. I didn't know of any bumblebees that chewed holes in flowers, and yet I was seeing bumbles up at the top of the flower very quickly transitioning from blossom to blossom. A little bit of investigating from bumblebee conservation sources tells me that there are some short-tongued bumblebee species that will engage in nectar robbing from flowers with a long corolla tube, but even more common is the tendency for bumblebees to use a hole previously chewed by a carpenter bee. This is called secondary nectar robbing. It is an opportunistic behavior. I did notice that some of the species visiting my comfrey this day did not know 
how to access, or maybe we're not even aware of the holes in the top of the flowers and continued to feed from the bottom. Perhaps their tongues are long enough that it's not an issue, but I did see this species, the Hunt's bumblebee, exclusively feeding from holes in the top of the flower. Again, maybe their tongue is shorter, maybe they are just a little bit more aware of what the carpenter bees have left them in terms of easy access to the flower. But it was very interesting to me that some species knew to utilize these holes and some species were oblivious to it or uninterested. Well, all of my honeybees tend to feed from the bottom opening of the flower. I did find one honeybee that was able to understand that it could collect nectar from the hole another bee had created. In the 30 minute period I spent in the garden observing pollinators on my comfrey, I counted seven species of bees and two species of flies that were visiting. Of those, I found three species of bumblebee and one individual honeybee that were accessing the nectar through the holes that carpenter bees had chewed a few days previous. I want to make it clear here that carpenter bees and other bee species that engage in nectar robbing are still crucial parts of the garden ecosystem and valuable pollinators for many garden crops and wildflowers as well. Just because you see a bee engaging in nectar robbing, that does not mean that it is somehow cheating or somehow does not belong in the garden. We want to make sure that we support all of our pollinators. So thank you for watching today. I hope this piqued your interest in our native pollinators and their fascinating and often poorly understood behaviors. I hope this encourages you to get out in the garden because there is no limit to what we can learn, observe, and enjoy in our garden ecosystems. I hope you'll tune back in tomorrow for more on permaculture gardening and resilient living. Thank you.